on this episode of The World's Strictest Parents. Quit complaining. Get to work. Meet the Sousas from Tracy, California. All right, guys, let's go. Time to feed the horses. A hardworking and successful family. Proud of their charity, but scornful of slackers. I don't want to hear any more of your attitude. For the next week, they'll take in two irresponsible teens. I hope this isn't how you talk to your mom and your dad. It is how I talk to my mom and dad. But will a week of stern morals and firm boundaries you're not going to do it, you're going to sit outside and wait until you decide to do it. Help these stubborn teens to help themselves. Megan, can you go get that right over there, please? And then we'll Oh, oh of course. I would love to. I'm Megan, I'm 17, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Get up and do the dishes. Megan has never really followed the rules. If you ask for help, she'll say no and walk away because she just will not do it if she doesn't want to. I'm not doing, doing the dishes. Up. Excuse me? I'm not doing the dishes. Megan, get back here right now. What? I don't like to listen and I don't like to follow the rules because I like to do my own thing. Get your butt up. Megan will make your life miserable by just being the nastiest, ugliest person, screaming and yelling at you. Stop it! Oh my God, that's enough with the language. If Megan doesn't change, I don't have a plan B. Oh. I'm okay, spending the night. For I'm yourself. spending the night. I can't, I'm I spending can't the monitor night. your behavior. I'm spending the night. If you're spending the night I'm spending somewhere. the night. So, uh, uh. I'm Paul, I'm 16, and I'm from Encinitas, California. And now you think you're going to go hang out when you've got schoolwork to do? Yep. Peace. I'll let, I'll, let, let, listen, listen, I'll let you. I'm not happy with my relationship with Paul. He's showing me a lot of disrespect lately. A lot of real smart mouth, a bad attitude. This is my room. My mom cleans it every day, so I don't really have to worry about that. I think Paul views me as his maid. I pick up after him in his room and and uh, make things very easy for him here. Here, go, go hang these up. I think it's hard for my mom because she's a single mom but I don't really care. I mean, it's not my problem. You seem to have to go out every single night of the week. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Your homework, maybe? I'm very tired of dealing with Paul's attitude, and I wish he would start respecting me more and being more considerate of my feelings. Bye. I hope Paul learns how good he has it here and comes back with a little better attitude. This is going to be like a vacation for me. This is my favorite one. I don't think they're going to suspect this one. My hope for Megan is that she learns the greatness of responsibility and respect. I don't think I'm going to listen to the same family at all. I'm Mike Souza. This is my wife, Cynthia, and we have three children, Savannah, who's 14, and seven-year-old twins, Anton and Serafina. And we are from Tracy, California. Go vacuum the table upstairs, baby. We have a game plan that we put together of how we want to raise our kids. You don't have to do it, but you are going to have the consequence. And the types of, of people that we want them to become. We expect them to respect their mother and father, and when we ask them to do something, we don't expect them to argue. You got all your dirty clothes picked up in your closet? Yeah. There is nothing more offensive than a disrespectful child. Currently, we have eight horses on the property, as well as five cats, three dogs, two bunnies. He got out again? Bunnies like to jump. And all of those animals require daily care. I think we're done with this one, guys. Let's move on. Cleaning the stalls, filling the feeders, changing the water, grooming the horses, riding the horses, cleaning kennels, cleaning bunny cages. Ew. Ooh, that's disgusting. It's really a lifestyle. If I could give some advice to the teens, it would probably be do what you're told when you're told. Hey, quit complaining. Get to work. My parents are not very fun to be around when they're angry. I don't want to hear any more of your attitude. If the teens that are visiting don't listen to our rules and don't respect us, then they will not have good things coming their way. Hi. Hey, how's it going? I'm Paul. Hi, Megan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. When I first saw Paul, I liked his style, because it was like somebody I'd hang out with back at home. I'm nervous, kind of. <laughs> are you? Yeah, seriously. When I started talking with Megan, 
She seemed like she'd be a fun girl and like someone that I'd definitely get along with. Different than the big city, I can say that. I want everybody to remember how much being respectful is very important to mommy and daddy. And the teens might be a little bit misbehaved, but we can teach them a valuable lesson. We can. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, they're all little. They're so little. Here we go. Finally get to meet the family. Their kids are gonna hate us. Hello, welcome. Hey. Welcome. Hi. How's it going? Savannah. Paul. Your name's Megan. Paul. Yeah. I'm Cynthia. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Nice Paul. Meet you. Welcome. Let's get your bags. Paul was a, a perfect gentleman, um, and Megan may be a little reserved, but I was a little suspicious. I want you guys to know that our home and our property is our sanctuary. It's our retreat. And we treat it with a lot of respect, and we teach our children to, to treat it with a lot of respect. And we expect you guys to be mature enough to have that same respect for us and our home. And I would just ask you, if you don't think you can do that, just get back in the car and leave. If you're good with that, welcome to our home and come on in. All right, let's leave the bags here and head in. He doesn't even like know us yet, and he's already saying we can leave if we don't follow one of his little rules, so kind of ridiculous. We felt that we needed to tell them right now that this is going to be something different for them. First is no swearing. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Obvious swear words. We don't use the Lord's name in vain. Um, and we don't use words like sucks, dumb, and stupid. Okay. No sexual contact between each other or with Savannah. No drinking. No drugs. Uh, no smoking. No cigarettes. Uh, that is zero tolerance. Could you please drop your hand down, sweetie? It's really hard to read your face and your reaction to what we're saying. Uh, we want to, though, check and make sure that you understand our rules. So give you the opportunity, if there's anything that you need to unload, um, do it now, because we're going to go look. OK. So um, you guys have anything you want to? I don't think they should search our bags at all. I mean, it's, got, it's an invasion of privacy. We have a lot of horses out here, and, and we have a large manure pile. And if we need to, we'll start spreading that manure out in our pasture load by load. And there won't be any fun. We don't want any of the contraband that they may have brought with them in our home. OK, Paul, you're clean. I was not nervous at all that they were going to find anything, because I don't know how you would think cigarettes are in a tampon case. I don't think so. I had been lied to, and I felt very disappointed. How does it make you feel that you know that you've been found out that you snuck them, even though we gave you every opportunity to tell us about it? It sucks. Er. <sighs> Take your bags upstairs. You need to change your clothes, because you and I have a date with the manure pile. It's going to be hard to really do anything or say anything without having to go clean up piles of manure. So that's going to suck. Oh, can't say suck. All right, so use the shovel, fill the wheelbarrow up, and we're going to take it out in the pasture and spread it out, fertilize the pasture. When I smelt and saw the big pile of it looked gross, it smelled gross. It was horrible and wet and gross. Why don't we start off by smashing your cigarettes underneath everything here? You can do that. I'm going to pass on no, that. No, you're not. Please do it. No, thanks. By standing there, I thought that I was going to get out of it. If you don't want me to have them, you can crush them. <laughs> I'm asking you to do it. You want to do this all night? We will. Because I won't crush cigarettes? Yeah. OK, then. I guess I just won't do it at all. <laughs> no, you're going to do it. She needed to know that she wasn't going to get away with it. It wasn't negotiable. Just stay here all night. OK. Fine with me. I like the smell of manure. Crush enough? Thank you, Megan. I gave in and crushed the cigarettes because I was getting cold. And it was really gross and stinky. Oh my gosh. Oh. We suspected that we would have to lay down the law early. We're halfway there. 
Go get another load. I hate my life. What's that? Nothing. I was thinking that this wasn't going to be the last time we were at the manure pile. Coming up. Megan, can you go get that right over there, please? And then we'll oh, oh, of course. I would love to. Megan and Mike go head to head. I'm just saying, please, I think please that's stop late. With the attitude. As we began the second full day with the teens, I was expecting that it wasn't going to be an easy day. Megan, why don't you go grab the wheelbarrow that you used yesterday? Awesome. <laughs> Back home, I don't like to do chores because I'd rather be out doing something with my friends. I feel like I've done this before. Megan, can you go get that right over there, please? And then we'll be oh, done oh of course. I would love to. <laughs> it was entertaining for me when Megan was giving the dad <laughs> because I was just kind of staying there, like, laughing about it. Megan, grab this right here. Well, if you know how to do it so well, you should do it. Megan. I'm just saying, please, I think Please that's stop late. with the attitude, OK? It's not an attitude. It's an opinion. Megan was clearly testing the bounds. I think she's used to saying what she wants to say when she wants to say it, no matter what. Megan, we could be spread manure if you'd it's rather. It's the truth. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm getting tired of your smart aleck. It's disrespectful. I'm really learning something from this. Hopefully what you're learning, Megan, is how you can be a productive member of a family and help out and be a member of a team. Oh, yeah, let me just hop right on that. Megan, any more smart aleck comments? We're going to be me. heading to the manure pile, OK? Excuse you me. hear me? Excuse me. Do you, do you hear what I said? I can hear you, yes. I don't want to hear any more of your attitude. You hear it? You hear me? I heard you the first time. I don't think Mike is intimidating at all. I just think he's really annoying, and it pissed me off. We have to go and do a task. We own some property, some commercial property. So we got to go just clean the office and the bathroom and sweep it up. I, at that point, was pretty fed up with Megan. And I felt it was important for, for me to take a time out from her and a good opportunity for Cynthia to, to take over with Megan. I'm sure you've cleaned a toilet before. No? You've never cleaned a toilet, young lady? Wow. Maybe her mom never had her do anything at home. You stick this in here and get it a little bit wet, and then you scrub. You want to give that a try? Mm -mm. Let's just give it a try, OK? No, I'm not I just my hands some. in a toilet. I just did some. That's cool. What's going to happen if you ever drop a piece of jewelry or your toothbrush? I'm going to flush it down there. You know what? If you learn some of these things, maybe you'll offer to help your mom out at home a little bit. No, it's just going to remind me how much I don't want at home. I'm really disappointed that she has to make this into such a big deal when all she has to do is just do it and get it over with. The point is, is I'm trying to teach you some skills. I saw you how to do it, OK? I know I'd how like to do it now. I'd like to see you try. Okay, I'll try. Thank you. Scrub, scrub. There you no, go. No, 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 sweetheart. Here. See the little edge right No, here? I don't see it. It looks clean to me. I was really annoyed of Cynthia making me scrub the toilet because it was gross. I will do this side. You do the other side, OK? You know what? Give me a high five. You just cleaned your first toilet, girlfriend. Yeah. OK, I can tell you're really excited. All righty. Next, we do the floor. So do you help your mom around the house at all? Mm, not really. Like, do No it. chores, nothing? No. Who does everything? My mom. <laughs> you don't think she'd want some help sometimes? Can you reach back around the toilet seat too, Megan, please? It'd be my pleasure. Megan's attitude was surly and maybe sarcastic. Um, she was not happy that I was asking her to clean the bathroom. Can you ring this out one last time for me? No. Come on, just once. I slept and I mopped. You didn't sleep or mop, so you can ring it. I hope this isn't how you talk to your mom and your dad. It is how I talk to my mom and dad, actually. I feel very sad for them. That's cool. Megan. What? I'd like to see you do. That's you cool. Don't I like don't want to do it. OK, you don't have to do it, but you are going to have the consequence when we get okay. back later today. That's awesome. OK. Because of her attitude, I did feel like I needed to just really lay down the law. It's time to fulfill the consequence. OK. All right, so could you get up, get your boots back on, and we'll go on down to the horses? 
because we're going to do the, the shoveling. Come on, Megan. You need to I'm not up. going to shovel poop. I'm not. <laughs> well, then get dressed, because we're going to go outside. You're not going to stay in here. If you're not going to scoop the poop, then you're not going to stay in the house. We certainly aren't out to torture anybody. Um, we're just out to make sure um, that they're responsible for their actions. Let's go outside. Let's go. If you're not going to do it, you're going to sit outside and wait until you decide to do it. OK. You know, Megan, we could just get this over with. That's cool. Because it's raining. I was going to let you really? do it. Really? I'm well aware. <laughs> I haven't finished talking. OK. Could you turn around and look at me while I'm talking, please? No. Turn around and look at me, Megan. I don't want to talk to you, though, so. Well, I'm trying to have a communication with you. I don't want to have a communication with you. Her behavior was just so uh, off-putting and insulting and disrespectful, and it just was so ridiculous. I did not really know what to do or say. Hey, Megan, can you sit up so I can talk to you for a minute, please? Can you sit up, please? What's the difference? It's just a matter of respect for you to sit up when I'm asking you to sit up and to talk to me. Well, I don't have anything to say to you, so... I was prepared to stay outside for a very long time. All you have to do is just say, OK, let's do it. You get it done in 10 minutes, and that's no, it. No, it doesn't take 10 minutes, and I'm not doing it anyway. You're trying to get beyond your wall. No, you're here. trying to get me to scoop the poop, and I'm not going to. Well, we're sort of at a stalemate here, and I guess it's just going to have to continue. Well, can you consider and think about it some more? After they weren't letting me inside and they weren't giving up, I was thinking that I was really going to be sleeping outside. Coming up. How are you doing out here? Cold. Will Megan stand her ground? And Mike reveals a painful past. Take me, don't take him. I want to be the one that goes. I think it was important for Megan to understand that her actions get her in the situations that she's in. And she did need to own up to that and pay the consequence for that. How are you doing out here? Cold. Yeah. Okay, we'll get you a jacket. Um, can I shovel poop for 10 minutes, like you guys said? Can we do 20 sh shovels in tw 10 minutes? I don't know. Let's go give it our best shot. OK. I finally agreed to shovel because it was getting really cold, and I knew we were probably going to have really good food for dinner. All righty. Let's go take a walk. Although I was prepared to make her stay outside all night, I was really hoping that we weren't going to get to that, to that point. She started shoveling right away, and we counted with her. That's 10. Halfway there. She just jumped in and she did it. What number am I on? 14. We just didn't know if this was going to be a turning point for her. Drum roll. 20. 20. I will be happy if I never see horse crap for the rest of my life. Ugh. Hey, Paul, Megan, you want to come on down? I was excited for day three, and I thought it was important for Megan and Paul to realize that it isn't all about us. You have any idea what these are? Oh, metal sorry. rods. Yep, metal rods. You know what it's used for? I have no idea. When I was 19 years old, I was a sophomore in college. We were in the Camaro driving down the street, and a one-ton four-wheel drive veered over into our lane and hit us head on. <clears throat> and I broke everything from my back to my ankles. These are the bars that they put in my legs to put me back together. They didn't think I was gonna survive. And so my grandfather came over to me and he grabbed my hand. And what he said was, God, I've lived a long life. So if you need to take someone today, take me, don't take him. I wanna be the one that goes. And it really made me realize that it isn't all about me. It is about what kind of a person we become and what we can do to change the world and how we can make the world a better place for everybody else. His grandpa did a very brave thing, offering his life. And um, I just thought that was pretty deep. 
And that's something that's really stuck with me and my family and values that I tried to teach my family. So we've uh, always been very involved in public service. And one of the projects that we've worked on is helping a group called Interfaith Ministries. And we're, we're really excited about taking you guys over here. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be much better than shoveling manure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will be. <laughs> After hearing Mike's story, it made me feel a little bit different about him because it made me kind of see his points of view. Interfaith Ministries is a food pantry, and they're an organization that's been around Tracy uh, for probably 10 or 15 years now. So you brought me these young people to volunteer today? Absolutely. OK, so we're going to put you to work. The fact that nobody gets paid is really shocking. If it looks like it's been washed a lot, or it has any stains, it has a, a weird smell like, you know, cat urine, um, we would toss those too in the Salvation Army bag. So I have to sniff them. Yeah. I wasn't really ready to do more work, and I thought it was kind of weird. We get entire cartons of eggs, and we have to break them up six at a time. So put them in the cut egg cartons, and then tape them close. OK. I wasn't too worried about it. This goes by quick, but it's kind of monotonous. I always tape it there, because it, it stays better. Yeah. It was clear that Paul was going through the motions, and I think he had more of an attitude of, uh, the sooner we get it done, the sooner we're out of here. So I took the opportunity to pull Paul aside um, and talk to him a little bit. So what do you think about doing all this work? Oh, I mean, it's, it's all right. You concern me, man. You make, you feel like, <laughs> I just feel like you're kind of going through the, going through the motions. I told you a little bit this morning about what a big turning point for me was in my life. And I don't know if this will be something like that for you, but I hope that, you know, when you're here and you can see what hard work does, it's not always fun, but it's rewarding. Yeah. Um, and it's what you need to do to be able to be successful. You're a smart kid. I've known you for two days, and I know that. And, you know, don't waste it. I know. He can be very successful. Um, he's just got to make the decision himself that it's time to get on the right path and do that. All right. I just wanted to teach my girls that it's good to give back to the community. I felt kind of weird doing the clothes. I didn't know if I was doing it right, and so I didn't think I was putting as much effort as I could have been, but I was trying. Like, I come here and, you know, see you know, the less fortunate people. And I don't know, I just, if I help one person at the end of the day, that's all that really matters to me, so. Seeing that people give their time makes me want to be able to do it more. I realized that, like, their stuff, like, really does help people, and I felt good after that. I think you need to be a lot taller for this box. <laughs> <laughs> Working with Megan was such a relief compared to how she had been the day before. I didn't really know exactly when that transition happened, but I was just grateful that it did. They didn't seem to mind doing the work. Um, and, you know, I think we, we all kind of left there with some smiles on our faces and feeling a little bit better. Coming up. Have you been on a horse before? Uh-huh. A lesson in control for Megan. And some harsh realities for Paul. I worry that you don't make the right decisions a lot of the times. Megan? I was thinking that maybe we could spend a little time together. I was hoping that maybe you would like to go on a little trail ride with me maybe around the vineyard. Does that sound like it might be fun for you? Uh-huh. OK, great. I felt that there was another Megan in there that I knew was a nicer, warmer person, and I really longed to see that side of her. Have you been on a horse before? Uh-huh. I might just give you a little bit of um, instruction on how to make the horse kind of turn. OK. I like that Cynthia is sharing one of her passions with me. And I like that she knows everything to do with them so she can teach me and I don't have to be so scared around the horses. I don't want to hurt it. I don't know what's for it. You know what? Go hard. She cannot feel it, really. She just really was very pleasant to be around. She was smiling a lot. Hey, go swing your leg over. I was having a little trouble with the horse at first. Oh, my God! All right, turn her away. Turn her away. Turn her... Just turn her away. I can see how my mom gets frustrated with me when she can't control me and when I won't listen to her. Oh, too fast! Too fast! Oh, oh, 
Oh, okay. Are you okay? Whoa. <laughs> Just like I couldn't control the horse today and it, it wouldn't listen to me. But eventually I got the hang of it. Looking good. I believe that her attitude started to change and she decided to sort of be a little bit more friendly. So I was very happy to see that. Awesome, you did a terrific job. Now take her reins. I'd had a lot of good discussions with Paul. I think I was starting to understand him a little bit better. So, you know, I thought it would be an appropriate time to give him the letter from his mom. And if you'd like me to stay here while you read it, I can. Otherwise, I can leave you alone. Um, I think I'd like to read it myself. Okay. He wanted it to between him and his mom. I talk about respect, and it's a two-way street. And so uh, I needed to give him that respect. Dear Paul, how the years have flown by, and now you are on the threshold of becoming a young man. And with that comes many responsibilities. I worry that you don't make the right decisions a lot of the times. And that is why I need to set boundaries for you that you may not like. I want you to be happy and succeed and accomplish everything you set out to do. You have so much potential. Please know that I will help you any way I can. And I want you to know that I am here for you. I love mom. In the letter, my mom mentions that she'll do anything to help me. So far up to this point, it doesn't seem like that's the truth. All she does is nag, and usually it's just arguments between us. Well, what'd your mom have to say? Nothing, it just uh, definitely made me realize that all she wants is the best for me. And she doesn't want me to make wrong decisions because she wants me to succeed in life. So it's best that we help each other and it'll be a lot better in the long run. I think it's real important to, for you to think about what your role is in that too, because you have to help her too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's as, much, as much or more your responsibility as it is hers. Mm -hmm. I really hope from now on that uh, it'll be a lot easier because I, I really do need my mom's help letter from his mom. Gave Paul lots of things to think about. Let's head up over here. I wanted to spend some time with Paul away from the house, away from all the chores. This place is amazing. Yeah. My grandfather built all this from scratch. So I decided I'd take him up to our ranch, which is some place that's very special for a lot of different reasons to me. It was view. Yeah, isn't that something? My grandfather was the youngest of eight children, and they lived on uh, uh, Azores Islands off of Portugal. His dad said, I can't feed you anymore. There's no more food here. You gotta, you gotta do something else. You gotta go with your brother and go to America because that's, that's where the promised land is. My grandfather was 16, um, had just worked for his dad, uh, gets on a ship and um, he didn't know how to speak English, didn't know how to read or write, just a kid. He got over here and uh, met up with his brother and they started buying beef cattle and butchering them. So before you knew it, you had these Portuguese immigrants that they had made a ton of dough. Wow. Can you imagine that at your age? <laughs> you know, if he can do that, why can't I do whatever I want to do? You need to remember that too. Yeah. It really showed me that you can do anything you put your mind to. My grandfather could do it. <laughs> Hell of a lot tougher circumstance than what you're looking at. Yeah. I was hopeful that it was something that would sink into him um, and really hit home with him, and I think it did. Coming up, <laughs> Megan is forced to face the truth. I don't want to read it. Let's go sit over by the pool. Megan was much more agreeable to be around. She had just sort of become this different person, um, one that I was liking very much and hoping to even get to know a lot better. Well, I brought you out here because I wanted to share something with you to give you something from home. I would very much like to stay out here while you read it, but if you'd like some privacy, I'd be happy to step aside and let you read it on your own. Um, well, I guess you could stay out here. Okay, that's great. This is a lot. My letter would not be filled with apologies and empty promises, that's for sure. It is time for you to step back and take a good look at your life. I don't want to read 
read it. You can read it if you want. It is time for you to step back and take a good look at your life. Your behavior is not only disrespectful, it is downright embarrassing. And I really don't appreciate being treated like a doormat. I am not your personal slave. I have kissed every Band-Aid and nursed every wound with all my heart. Your behavior makes my life a living hell. I feel like this is the first time I can say what I feel without you screaming at me. I hope this experience helps you understand the real meaning of respect and responsibility. And someday we can have a conversation with our inside voices and really hear what each other is saying. I believe in you. Love you more, Mommy. Do you agree with all those things, all those points she made? You do? Yeah. Can you tell me what you think upsets you the most about the letter? Mm -hmm. I don't know. All of it. All of it? She just knows that you have a lot more potential and it may be breaking her heart, you know, when she sees you making other choices. You know, when you're young, you can make more mistakes and it's easier to correct them, but the older you get, it's harder to stop and turn around and, and go down a different path. You don't get do-overs, at least not very often. What do you think in there would be the hardest thing to change about your behavior? Mm, being disrespectful. Do you think that's something that you would be willing to work on a little bit when you got home? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. I think that letter really hit home with her. You know, but sometimes habits are hard to break, so sometimes it might take a little bit of time. Can I have a hug? Thank you. Oh, I think you're beautiful. I think you're a lovely child, and you're going to be such a lovely, wonderful person. When you grow up. <laughs> It makes me feel really bad that I make her life a living hell. I realize that things need to change at home. Can we stop? Savannah, Megan, Paul, can you come down here, please? We had had a good day, so we thought it was time that Savannah and Megan and Paul have some time without us where they can just kind of be by themselves and, and have some fun. Thank you for all your cooperation, and it was, it was a great day. So Cynthia and I are going to go with the twins, and we're going to go get some dinner. So you guys have the run of the place for the next hour or two. We got you some pizza. I had built some trust in them. I think they had built some trust in us, and, and I, wasn't, I wasn't worried. You know the rules. Let's not have any problems. Let's just have some fun so everybody can have a good time. All right. All right. Thank you. Cool. Have a good time. It was cool that the family finally gave us some free time without their supervision. This is what I've been needing. I'm glad I came here this week because I didn't think I was going to change at all. And then after just getting used to everything, it made it a lot better, and I feel like I'm part of the family. I like it, Paul. I, just, I love it. You like it? Mm-hmm. When Megan first got here, she was kind of stuck up and rude. And as the week progressed, you could see a huge difference in her attitude and everything about her. Only if we could make s'mores. Coming up, will Paul heed Mike's warnings when he's got to be thinking about where's he going with his life? And can Megan vow to change? Her attitude was extremely disrespectful. Today's the day your mom's coming. Maybe you can go home and have a fresh start with your mom. You need to go pack your bags. Okay. I'm grateful to Cynthia and Mike for teaching me how to be respectful. I'm looking forward to not arguing with my mom so much at home. I 
think you have unlimited potential. Um, so, um, you know, I really hope that you take that to heart and you can work with your mom and she can help you um, figure out how you best meet those goals. All right, so go ahead on upstairs, think about it a little bit, and right. mom will be here in a little bit. All right, thank you. All right. Pretty excited to see my mom. Definitely going to tell her that I'm going to be more helpful at the house and not as disrespectful. I hope Paul and his mom will be able to communicate better with each other. Both of them need to work on their relationship and need to work on how they interact with each other. Mom. Hello, my baby. <laughs> I am. I was uh, anxious to see how Paul did this week, and um, I missed him. To us, respect is very important. That's kind of the foundation of everything, uh, we believe. And um, you know, if you're not respectful to others, if you're not respectful to others' property, others' property, you're not being respectful to yourself. My main concern was for, with him is his. Uh, his weekend and his partying and and uh, and I don't I want him to I want him to concentrate more on school rather than his next good time and his weekends and whatever decisions he makes now, if he makes any wrong decisions, can affect his future. Sure. Interfaith Ministries is a food pantry. We have a history of helping them out, so we took Paul and Megan over there. Paul was great with that. What did you think about that? Did you have, you have a good time with that? Yeah, it was a really good time. It's a good feeling when you're when you're doing something for, for others, other people. Isn't it? Yeah. I don't think he's really had that ex experience before. He's got to be thinking about where's he going with his life. And that you should be more of a team player with her, and running the household and getting things accomplished, and not leaving all the responsibility on her shoulders as a single mother as well. So what, what do you think your mom could do to help you in your goals for your education? And well, maybe um, making sure that I'm doing good and keeping up on the stuff that I'm doing in school, obviously, and just helping me reach that goal. And I think we're going to work at that a lot more. And Partnership. It's a partnership, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for, for everything. He has duties and responsibilities regardless of what his mom asks for. Susan, it's been a pleasure. Not just being all about Paul, but being about his, his family with his mother um, and, you know, how he's going to find his place in the world. There you go. This experience has made me want to be more successful, and I really hope that when she sees that I'm doing better and maturing, that she'll give me more freedom. See you. It's nice meeting you. You too. We truly believe with the right direction and support that he will have no problem getting on the right track. Nice to see you. You too. I want a successful relationship with Paul. I'm sure his experience here this week will help him understand me more and it will help our relationship. You cut me slack, I'll cut you slack. You show me and then I'll show you. That's right. So we'll see. I hope Megan learned responsibility and respect. Those are the two things I want her to get out of this experience. I was nervous to see my mom. Hi, Mommy. Hey, kiddo. Miss me? How are you? Good. I miss you. You do? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you want to go inside? Yeah. I was nervous that she may have embarrassed me with her behavior. We were just curious to hear in your words why you felt like it was important for her to come and spend the time with us. Megan's pretty unruly and does what she wants and when she wants, regardless of what you tell her. Megan thinks she's always right. Um, she'll just browbeat you and argue and argue and stand off, trying to get you to change your mind. So um, my goal for Megan was hoping that she could learn some respect and some responsibility by spending time with another family. Her attitude was extremely, extremely um, disrespectful, mm -hmm. defiant. And I talked to her a little bit about you. I would try to say, how, how does your mom feel when you treat her like this? Don't you think it hurts her in her heart to know that you don't treat her with respect? What we learned with Megan is we've got to be more stubborn.
but the best thing out of this would be is where your relationship goes from here. Mm -hmm going to be less disrespectful and help around the house and keep my room clean and go to school on time. That would be a big bonus. The price of greatness is responsibility. Remember that. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to come home and start over. Love you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. We saw a big change in her. I was so happy. I was so delighted. And the more I knew her, the more I wanted to know her. Thank you. It was our pleasure. It Thank really you. It was our pleasure. We did hit on um, a lot of the, the issues and problems that Megan has with her mom. Such a pleasure. You too. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to leave here um, giving the better effort to their relationship. Goodbye. I'm very grateful. Um, they seem like a great, wonderful family. I just hope that she takes everything she's learned here and applies it to her life and all aspects of her life. Right here, Fina. Be good. When I first got here, I was rude and disrespectful. And now that I'm leaving, I have learned how to have respect for people. Love you. I love you too. Love you more. <laughs>